Hi, welcome to the presentation of Schulich Engineering Edge. I'd like to take this opportunity to acknowledge that the University of Calgary sits on the traditional territories of the people of the Treaty 7 region in southern Alberta. The city of Calgary is also home to Métis Nation of Alberta Region 3. In this discussion, you'll discover how you can benefit from an enhanced education, expanded career development opportunities, exceptional scholarships, global travel opportunities, and extraordinary student experiences while you study engineering at the University of Calgary. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome our uh, esteemed speakers. We have Emily Wyatt, our Manager of Student Experience at the Schulich School of Engineering, and Brianna Boris, a PhD candidate in Biomedical Engineering at the University of Calgary. She has been with Schulich throughout her engineering education. Welcome, Brianna and Emily. Hello, everyone. Welcome to our first discovery session of the day. We're really excited to have you here. Um, I'm sorry that we can't be all together on campus in person, but hopefully this gives the opportunity for people outside of uh, Calgary to learn more about the University of Calgary and virtually hear what we have to offer. As Nicole said, my name is Emily Wyatt. I'm the manager of student experience, which basically means I oversee all the great things our students are doing outside of the classroom. So including our leadership certificate program, entrepreneurial opportunities, mentoring, professional development, and work experiences. I'll let Brianna introduce herself as well. Thanks, Emily. Hi, everyone. My name is Brianna, and as Nicole mentioned, I've been involved with the Schulich School of Engineering for a number of years now. I graduated with my chemical engineering degree and a biomedical engineering minor back in 2016, and then I started my PhD in biomedical engineering. I work in a lab that focuses on developing processes for large scale stem cell expansion in something called bioreactors. Um, and I'm very well equipped with the biomedical engineering field. I'm currently tuning in actually from sunny California where I'm working on an internship as a bioprocess engineer. I'll talk a little bit about biomedical engineering throughout this presentation, but of course, feel free to ask me any questions about that later. Great, thank you so much. And I did wanna draw your attention to the QR code in the bottom left corner. So throughout this presentation, if you have questions that come up on anything that we're speaking about, um, do feel free to QR code in um, and it'll take you to a program called Slido and you can submit your question and we'll get to as many of them as possible at the end of the presentation. Um, and so as we said, today we'll kind of be covering all aspects of uh, both the student experience and the great opportunities we have to offer but also covering kind of key dates and things that you might need to know for scholarship applications and actually submitting um, uh, submitting key dates for submitting applications. So uh, without further ado we'll get into the content of our presentation so I'll pass it over to Brianna. So welcome to the Schulich School of Engineering. This is our beautiful new building we have been beyond lucky in the last few years. The Schulich School of Engineering received a $50 million donation from the CNRL company, which was matched by the government of Alberta. Now, what this means is we got to build this beautiful new building. It's LEED Platinum certified. So what that means is it's top environmental standards in the world. And what it means for us students as undergrads, graduate students, faculty and staff, is we have these gorgeous new labs, teaching spaces, collaborative work areas, you name it. One of my favorite areas in our new building is of course, one of the teaching labs. So we have both research labs, which is where graduate students like me complete our research, but we also have a bunch of teaching labs. So as you'll kind of hear throughout this presentation, engineering is of course your applied science. So everything that you do in the classroom Right away, we take you into labs and we actually show you how to use it in the real world. So in this new building, they built a gorgeous new biomedical engineering lab where I get to take you in and show you how to do stem cell culture, bone and joint repair, as well as different kind of electrical engineering applications. Thanks. Thanks, Brianna. So we wanted to talk about one of our exciting new programs. It was in its second year this year, but one of our goals at the Schulich School of Engineering is ensuring that we open up engineering to as many students as possible and various kind of interests uh, interest in engineering. Um, and so one of our key initiatives was launching the Bioengineering Summer Institute. 
So it's really for students who are interested in biology. A lot of times when you're in grade 12 and you're considering a career in engineering or other sciences, um, it's hard for you to take chemistry, um, chemistry, physics, and biology. Um, so this gives you a way to take biology and chemistry in grade 12 and still be eligible for admissions into engineering. So it's a four week program and it's a really hands on opportunity for students to learn how uh, bioengineering and biology actually are relevant to engineering. And it's a new way um, to enter first year. So we've had some really popular programming. Um, last year, we actually had one of our Olympic medal medalists, Alex Goff, um, talk about how Lujing um, uses physics and uh, bioengineering into factoring in the success uh, for her Olympics run. So it's really, as Brianna said, engineering is an applied science. So the four week institute is a really fun way uh, to learn a little bit about physics, but also, but in the way that uh, relates to students who are most interested in uh, biology and bioengineering. So if you're interested in taking biology in grade 12, you can still join our engineering program, which is great. And you'll have the opportunity to, talk, to participate in this four week program that will really prepare you for first year. Awesome. Thanks, Emily. So we know when you start university, one big thing on your mind is probably how are you going to pay for your education? And we take that into consideration here when you come to the Schulich School of Engineering. Again, we're very lucky to actually offer the highest engineering scholarships in all of Canada. Last year, we gave out over $4.5 million to our engineering students. And this comes in a variety of ways. And I hope as you're listening to some of these ways, you think about applying for all of them because it really is worth it and it'll make a huge difference in your degree. So we have a bunch of scholarships, which you'll automatically be applied for a bunch of entrance scholarships, the Dean's entrance scholarship, for example, but then there's a bunch of engineering specific ones and ones you need to apply for separately. And these include our 24 prestigious Schulich scholarships. And you can see there on the screen, those range from about 13,000 to $26,000 annually. And those can be renewed for up to three years. Um, these are life-changing scholarships. I was very, very fortunate to get one in my first year of engineering, and they're actually divided into two categories. So we really love well-rounded students here at the Schulich School of Engineering. So half of those prestigious scholarships are academic merit-based, and the other half are community service leadership-based. Um, that's the one that I received, and it really changed my whole degree. Um, it allowed me to concentrate fully on school, extracurricular activities with there, without constantly being worried about how I'm going to pay for my degree, how am I going to get out of debt. Um, those awards you do need to apply for early admission for and submit a separate application. We will give you those deadlines at the end of our presentation, but please do keep that in mind and we really encourage you to apply for them. In addition to these prestigious scholarships, there's a number of small but very um, helpful awards given to engineering students as well as non-engineering students. Um, and these awards, we have continuing undergrad awards. So you can apply continuously throughout your degree, keep collecting scholarship money to help you pay for your education. Um, this is something I really encourage you to do. Um, look through our university website, apply to all the engineering specific ones, and also even look outside of the university. So. If your parents work for a company, ask and see if they might have scholarships available to students of employees. Um, sometimes banks, those kind of things, all have different kinds of scholarships. So please do apply for those. All right, so your engineering majors. So when you join us at the Schulich School of Engineering, um, Yes, oh, sorry, I just got a reminder here. Again, at the bottom left-hand corner of your screen, you have a Slido um, QR code that you can go onto and ask any questions. Feel free to start asking questions throughout the presentation. At the end of the presentation, we will be answering as many questions as possible. So please feel free to use that right away. All right, so engineering majors. So one of the best things about the Schulich School of Engineering is when you come in your first year, you actually do a common core first year. So what that means is every engineering student takes the same 10 
courses in their first year. And these courses are basically your introduction to maths and sciences. And then we also give you these introductory courses to the different majors. So for example, you're gonna take an introduction to chemical engineering course, an introduction to electrical engineering course. This is really awesome because it basically gives you the opportunity not only to kind of get a bit of a view of how all the different engineerings work and how they can work together, but it'll also tell you what you're really good at and what you really like. So at the end of the first year of engineering, you get to choose which major you would like to go into. This can be really helpful if you were like me when I came into first year engineering, I didn't even know what engineering was, let alone which major I wanted to enter. I kind of thought maybe I wanted to do mechanical engineering and work in the biomed field because I really liked prosthetics and I think they're really cool. Obviously, I still think they're really cool. Um, but when I went into first year, I actually wasn't very good at the mechanical engineering courses, but I was really good at chemical engineering and I really loved it. So that allowed me at the end of my first year to choose chemical engineering as my major. And that's what I continued on to. So these are our majors. That's just kind of a very brief overview of some of them. So biomedical engineering is a brand new major that's going to be offered next year, hopefully. Um, please tune into our next discovery session if you'd like to learn more about it. But it's going to encompass everything from regenerative medicine, study of the body in motion, new imaging technologies, you name it. Chemical engineering, that's what I am. Um, it's a very broad field. As a basis, we design processes to turn raw materials into useful products. And it can be applied to quite literally almost every field, everything from agriculture to oil and gas to pharmaceuticals, cosmetics, all your food and beverage industries, those all involve chemical engineers. Um, geomatics engineering is a really cool one and it's one of the fastest growing fields. Um, geomatics engineering is when you think GPS, if you are around to play Pokemon Go, managing big data, that's all geomatics engineering. And the University of Calgary has pretty much the best geomatics engineering program in all of Canada. Uh, software engineering, another very in-demand field right now. Almost all companies are looking for tech talent and engineers, uh, software engineers from the University of Calgary um, absolutely provide that. I'm going to jump to mechanical engineering. This encompasses everything from robotics to artificial joints um, to building really cool, sustainable, cutting edge vehicles. So if you like to design, make and build things, mechanical engineering definitely might be for you. Uh, civil engineering, this is all about structure, but it's also about helping and looking at creating a better environment through things like smart communities. So you're the ones involved with designing the transportation systems, the water systems of new communities, as well as making better buildings, better bridges, better structures. Electrical engineering, of course, creating new technologies through the manipulation of electricity and finding one of the big areas at the university is using electrical engineering to find better ways to harness sustainable energy. So, of course, everything's talking about energy these days. Um, electrical engineers at the University of Calgary look how to create better ways to sustain that. Oil and gas engineering will be very great to prepare you for this energy sector as well. The last thing I have to mention is this dual degrees. Um, this program is quite unique to the University of Calgary and it's really awesome if you're someone who's interested in both engineering and business. You can actually get a double major, so if you're getting two majors, no minors, in both engineering and business in as little as five years. And you're going to get all this support from both the Schulich School of Engineering as well as the Hasking School of Business. So if you can't decide between those two, we actually have this amazing option for you to get both degrees in as little as five years instead of taking eight plus years. Mm -hmm. oh, Emily, I'm all stuck. Okay. Miners, thank you. So those are all the majors that you can enter. So those majors are going to be kind of your toolkit, your foundation. Another option that we have along with all these majors is that you can add a minor to almost any one of our majors. So when you look here, there's a bunch of different cool ones. Of course, I'm a biomedical engineering minor, so that one's kind of easy for me to talk about. So 
it is really an introduction to a field. And we're gonna show you how to use your engineering major in that minor's field. So if you're a chemical engineer and looking kind of at a biomedical engineering minor, you'll be working on things like me, like regenerative medicine, pharmaceuticals, issue engineering. If you're a mechanical engineering with a biomed minor, you might be looking at device design, prosthetics, building wheelchairs. Our software and our electrical engineers are gonna be looking at how to create imaging technologies. So your MRIs, your CAT scans, your X-rays, the small sensors, when you think the little sensors in your Garmin or Apple watches, to sensors that monitor blood sugar levels and glucose monitors. Um, civil engineers even have a huge role in biomedical engineering when they're making different kinds of biomaterials. So if anyone knows someone who has a hip replacement or a knee replacement, that kind of structure and that material testing is often done by civil engineers. Um, a couple other cool ones that I want to highlight, the digital engineering minor is a new one, and it can be added to everything but a software engineering degree because it basically teaches you the basis of software and coding. Um, everyone knows that this is kind of very in demand. So even if you're, say, a mechanical engineer, but want to are really interested in coding, you can do something like a digital engineering minor. Uh, the one thing I will mention here is that some of these minors are applicable with any of the majors. Some of them are more specific to that type of major. For example, if you look at structural or transport engineering minors, those kind of go with the civil engineering major. But this is kind of just to show you this huge depth of what we can offer. And really, whatever your interests are, there's going to be classes and educational resources available for you. Thanks, Brianna. So as you can see, we have a really great academic experience at the Schulich School of Engineering with plenty meeting. of options and a great foundation for you to, uh, for you to build on. Um, so we did want to talk about our engineering work expertise. So for our program, can you hear me? I'm just not lit, not lit up. I'm going to assume I am. <laughs> um, for our engineering work experience, we've launched our practicum program. So basically from day one as a first year student, uh, you can start to gain relevant work experience. Um, and the unique thing about this program is it supports you with part time work, but also simultaneously provides you with um, training and professional development to help you build your skills as a future professional engineer. So while you're completing your work experiences in your first year and your second year as a part of the practicum program, you'll also be learning uh, about relevant skills for, um, for how to be a good professional, communication, teamwork, uh, managing up, really things that will help you in your engineering career. And then secondly, as far as our work experience, we have our internship program, which is a paid program that you apply to after your third year. And you can go on 12 to 16 months paid work placement globally. These are relevant to, um, to your field of study. And so you can choose from our job board with supports of job application materials from our great engineering career center team. Uh, there's plenty of opportunities locally for internship, but when it's safe to do so, you can also travel for your internship. As Brianna mentioned, um, she's down in California. Uh, we have really great relationships uh, in Switzerland for students to go there, um, students all over Europe and Asia. Um, and then close to home, we have really exciting opportunities as well. You may know uh, Garmin's head office just opened in, uh, in Cochrane, which is just outside of Calgary. And that's been a really great opportunity for, uh, for our students to work for a really world-renowned company. Uh, and we've been able to build uh, those relationships. Uh, so it's a really great opportunity for you to get a solid year to 16 months of work experience. And our students have said that really that year to 16 month time frame allows them to truly feel what it's like to be a working engineer, get in-depth projects and be treated as, um, as a professional contributing to the team and not kind of a student staff member that's only there for a short period of time. So 
uh, our internship program is is really great, well run, and you know obviously there's been some challenges this year, but we've still been um, we've still been working to get students placed, and we have almost 400 placements um, this year despite some of the challenges um, in the market. And once um, uh, once we're able to um, grow grow it again, we hope to continue uh, continue to do so. But there is very much still students getting employed and uh, having these opportunities, and we continue to prioritize. Uh, work experience, paid relevant work experience at the Schulich School of Engineering. So going back to, we have the, the work experience, which is great, but we also want to make sure that you're participating in activities outside of the classroom that, um, that build the skills and relationships that you need to not only be employable after you graduate, uh, but to get promoted and be successful in your uh, in your activities, so uh, we have two different types of mentoring programs at uh, at the Schulich School of Engineering. So, as a first year student, it's going to be most relevant um, for you to join our first year mentoring program. So, as of right now, we have about four hundred uh, students involved in our mentoring program, and so as a first year student, it can really be valuable for you to gain advice from an upper year student. Uh, as Brianna said, you're all taking the um, uh, the same common core first year. So even a student in third year uh, can provide you with some guidance and expertise on how to navigate uh, that first year experience and just kind of give you some tips and tricks on how they made it through. And then when you're an upper year student, you can also join the program as a mentor, which is a really great professional development opportunity and mentoring is really recognized for a PEGA or, or Alberta uh, professional uh, professional engineering organization, which is great. Uh, and then in addition, we also have opportunities to be mentored by industry professionals. So we have an online uh, online engineering mentoring program that connects you with relevant industry professionals and you connect with them for about uh, three to four months and build that relationship. And then you can keep kind of pursuing other, um, other professionals and keep kind of mentoring uh, relationships as you go. An industry mentor is a really great person to talk to about your internship placement, job application materials, uh, you know, if you're in first year trying to consider um, what what department or major to go into, it's great to hear what a day in the life of a geomatics engineer looks like um, and if that's something you might want to consider. Our industry mentoring program is also all online, so um, you can connect with, uh, with alumni or current industry all over the world and really learn more about what, uh, what a career as an engineer might look like in all the various fields. And then one of our really uh, unique program is our engineering leadership program. So it's a three year program and we encourage students to join in their first year. So it's, we have a, close to 400 students, uh, sorry, close to 600 students in our program um, this year. Uh, so starting from your first year, um, you join the program and it's gonna teach you those communications, uh, team building, um, uh, project management skills, and it culminates with a community project that you work on um, with relevant industry professionals. So um, the engineering leadership program has recently been recognized as a certificate program at the University of Calgary. So it's a really great supplement to your um, education. And we're finding when students are applying for internship or summer job experiences, and they have the engineering leadership program on their, uh, on their resume, it's a great opportunity for um, uh, they've been asked about things from um, from their employer, future employers in interviews, and they're asked to kind of share that program and what they learned. So there's definitely interest uh, in industry and students that have uh, been participating in that program. And it's a great way to kind of build your, um, your foundation of skills and for first year students also make new friends and connect in a fun, engaging way. So I want to talk a little bit about uh, global experiences, but first we need to acknowledge the elephant in the room. Unfortunately, as of right now, we are not able to provide any global travel experiences, but we hope to be able to offer those again when it's safe to do so. So we certainly want to highlight um, the opportunities that we have and um, things that you can do to, um, to internationalize your degree. 
So um, we have a lot of trips. We launched this past year, they're called Global Engineering Experiences. I actually went to Guatemala um, with a group of students and we uh, installed some water filtration systems, did some data management with them uh, and did some safer stove installation in rural communities there. So it was a really great opportunity for students to learn uh, to use their engineering skills, but also be really um, engaged in a, in a community that was unlike anything they had ever experienced before. We also had a group of students go to Germany for uh, Falling Walls, which was an innovation and entrepreneurship conference, and they were able to uh, they were able to um, uh, connect with different startups in Germany and learn more about uh, what entrepreneurship is like in, uh, in, in Europe. And so uh, we encourage you when you're here, you can really figure out what makes sense for you in your career paths. So we have short-term experiences that go over reading break. You can also choose to do a longer term exchange and take a full semester abroad somewhere. And as I mentioned before, you can take your internship program um, and you can spend a full year internationally uh, really learning about um, what engineering is like in other places. Um, so we also have our outdoor leadership experiences that we launched last year. So we had a group of students going out to um, uh, snowshoeing in the mountains and they actually slept in uh, snow forts that they had built themselves, um, which was, uh, I wasn't there, but I'm told it was enjoyable, <laughs> but it's definitely may not be for you, but for our venture students enjoying the mountains uh, close to Calgary is a really great um, opportunity. And again, when it's safe to do so, we're hoping to launch more of these types of experiences where we can enjoy, um, enjoy the great outdoors, which is really close to our backyard. And then uh, again, if you're thinking about doing these experiences, you can also go, there's international conferences, um, other volunteer opportunities that are offered through the University of Calgary, um, and a lot of clubs and teams participate in international competitions uh, every year. One of the greatest things about the Schulich School of Engineering is that we provide a significant amount of funding for these opportunities. Because if you're sitting here listening, that all sounds great, but how would I pay for that? Um, when we were named the Schulich School of Engineering, we were fortunate enough to receive some endowment funding from the Schulich family. One of those uh, things being for the Schulich Student Activities Fund. So every year, there's three times a year you can apply, um, but all of these initiatives that I talk about qualify for the Schulich Student Activities Funding. And each student is eligible for up to $3,000 throughout the course of their degree to help to subsidize uh, these international and professional development experiences. Awesome, thanks Emily. So continuing right along that track, um, I just wanna remind everyone to please feel free to keep asking questions we have a large group kind of in the behind the scenes who are gonna be typing and answering them as Emily and I go through the presentation. So this is something I was quite heavily involved with through my undergraduate and graduate degrees is all the awesome clubs on campus. <clears throat> Can you hear me now? Any luck? Anyone give thumbs up? Are you able to hear me? Yes, no. Can you hear me? I'll maybe mute and unmute again. No, Brianna, you're fine. Keep going. Oh, I can, you can hear me? Okay, awesome. So um, the University of Calgary itself has over 300 student sanctioned clubs and 80 of those are within engineering themselves. So these clubs range from everything from student government and leadership to volunteer opportunities. So I spent a lot of time with Engineers Without Borders, Project 90, Women in Science and Engineering. And then we have all these awesome competition teams. So basically any vehicle you can think of, we've built it. So we have a solar car, we have a Baja off-roader, we have a Formula One race car, we have an airplane, we even have a great Northern concrete toboggan. Um, this sounds kind of silly, but we take it very seriously and race it throughout Canada. These clubs and extra experiences are something we really encourage you to join right out of first year because not only does it give you another opportunity for you to apply your engineering skills, it also gives you a great opportunity to build leadership, 
meet new people who are going to really help you and integrate you into these teams. So obviously, for example, when you join SolarCon first year, you don't know how to build a solar car, but the upper year students are going to help you, put you on part of the project, teach you, help teach and learn with you. And then by the end of the year or end of your fourth year, you're going to be like, wow, I helped build a solar car. I should mention too that all of our competition teams do very well. So we take these vehicles and we race them and compete them internationally. Um, our solar car actually just won first place at the Formula Sun Grand Prix in Austin, Texas last year. Um, so this was us beating out schools like MIT, Berkeley, Waterloo, you name it. So we're really proud of that um, and we always do really good. Um, now, like I just kind of mentioned, with lots of these clubs and teams, there's a bunch of cool travel opportunities for you to either race, present at conferences, help out in a volunteer way. Something the Schulich School of Engineering has that's very unique to it is called the Schulich Student Activities Fund. This is basically a large sum of money that has been set aside to help subsidize these trips for students. So that when a student is saying, wow, this is such an amazing opportunity, I really want to take part in it, we don't want money to be the detrimental factor. So we're going to help you get to all those cool opportunities. Can everyone still hear me okay? Okay, great. Another great thing is our engineering makerplex. So this just opened um, in 2018, kind of along with all of our beautiful new buildings. And this is another hands-on area for everyone to come play with. Here we have everything from 40 3D printers. We have a woodworking shop. We have a full CNC milling machine shop. We have a paint booth. This is what we use to kind of decorate all our cool cars. We have a sound and recording studio, um, robotics, makerspace. And what's cool is you can go there. It's open to all students, all staff. And what they want you to do is get that experience. We're going to help you. We're going to train you. And then you can use it in any ways that you want. You can use it for class projects. You can use it for your teams. You can even use it for personal fun things. I have just some of my fun little 3D printed toys here. I'm kind of a Marvel fan. Got my little baby Groot and my little Iron Man name tag. Um, this was just us playing around with 3D printers. And that's what they want you to do there. They want to give you the proper training and then they want you to play around with them and actually get comfortable with more of these hands-on tools. Great. So Brianna mentioned a couple of opportunities academically, how we've integrated uh, digital engineering uh, into our academic programming. But we also want to make sure that regardless of what, uh, what program you're in, we're providing opportunities to learn more about, um, about digital research and teaching innovation. So we've launched just this past year. It's called Zeta. It's a digital design lab and t-shirt um, uh, teaching innovation lab for um, workshops, hackathons. There's a virtual reality lab um, with augmented reality and mixed reality of equipment. Uh, and we want students to be able to explore and play um, and learn more about software development and gather data. So regardless of what minor or major program you're in, we understand that uh, digital innovation is the way that things are going in all aspects of engineering. And Zeta is a really great opportunity for you to build those skills outside of the classroom, but are really going to prepare you for a career in engineering uh, in any way possible. So Zeta will have various training programs. Uh, you'll be able to learn uh, new softwares, develop things for clubs and teams, uh, and really focus on, uh, on building those relevant skills that are gonna help you in an engineering career, or frankly, just have a little bit of fun with digital uh, innovation. We wanna make sure that we're providing you with, with that opportunity as well, regardless of what uh, department or major you, uh, you choose to participate in. So Zeta is something if you're, um, if you're joining us next year, that's going to be a really great opportunity uh, for you to, to learn those new skills as well. 
So we've talked a lot about work experience and things are happening. So I want to talk about our Launchpad program. We're really excited to partner with the Hunter Hub for Entrepreneurial Thinking to offer uh, this program for our engineering students, but it's also open to uh, cross-discipline groups across campus. So at our core, uh, engineers are problem solvers. And so we want to make sure that you're using your problem solving skills to potentially create a startup company or, um, or build something that, that really helps society. And we want to make sure that you have the training necessary to do that. So it's really a chance for you to learn how to be an entrepreneur and what's that, what that's like. So what you do is you apply as an individual or um, as a group that you maybe met in a first year course or whatnot. And you kind of take an idea throughout a whole year. You work with uh, entrepreneurial mentors, you work with the Hunter Hub, you learn all the skills that you might need to be a successful entrepreneur. And at the end of that process, you decide was our idea great? Do we want to continue with it? Do we have a viable project here? Or do we want to start from scratch and go again? You hear so often from entrepreneurs, it's really about um, uh, trying, failing, and retrying. So this really gives you kind of a safe spot to land uh, and learn more about what it's like to be an entrepreneur, uh, learn from people, and really start that first process of uh, you know, your first idea or startup um, and working with people, learning those kind of team building and core skills. Additionally, um, we've been able to offer some entrepreneurship sessions in, uh, in first year classes and beyond. So recently in our Eng 200 class, uh, which is a class you will all participate in, we heard from local entrepreneurs kind of sharing uh, their stories of entrepreneurship and they're learning about project management in the next couple of weeks. So really from that day one, we want you to start uh, learning about entrepreneurial thinking and those types of skills will help you whether you're working at a company or if you choose to start your own. So that's a really big um, priority for us and we're excited to be able to offer you the opportunity to start to think like an engineering entrepreneur from day one. Awesome. And then just as kind of a quick note on our end, we know engineering can be challenging and we're not going to hide that from you, but throughout your degree, we are going to be there to fully support physical and mental well-being. Um, and we actually have an awesome space down in our new engineering building with a full decompression zone, as well as a variety of other mental health resources, everything from our workshops, our pet therapy, our exercise studios, um, and yoga and meditation. So with that, I would just like to say thank you from my end. Emily is going to give you a few quick dates for you to look at, and then we're going to answer some questions about um, that are coming in now. Great. Um, so obviously the purpose of this was to give you an idea of what life at the Schulich School of Engineering is like and encourage you um, to apply and consider studying here. So um, already applications are open, which is exciting. Um, the, all of the scholarships that Brianna talked about, including this Schulich Prestige Awards, um, those are due December 1st. So we obviously want to encourage you to apply um, right away. But at the very least, if you want to be considered for those awards, please do apply by, uh, by December 1st. And all of your supporting documentation uh, will be due on December 15th. Uh, and then if you want a little bit more time to mull things over, uh, March, uh, March 1st is the deadline for, uh, for you to submit your applications. Um, and then you have until um, May 1st to uh, decline or accept your admissions offer. Um, so all of this information can be found on the admissions site and we're here to support the process along the way. So please don't hesitate to be in touch um, if you would like more information or clarity on the dates. And we do want you to keep in touch. So you have a few different options for that. We have our Discover Engineering at UCalgary email and 
anything regarding admissions or what it's like to be a first year student, that would be the email um, to go to and we'll make sure that you get the right, uh, the right information there. And today also at our virtual booth, we bought on hand so many great staff members and faculty members and a variety of students from all the different um, majors represented. So you can ask them specific questions about what it's like to be a student here. Uh, I did want to say it's a little bit hard to see my scarf, but I am wearing the Schulich School of Engineering scarf. So as an incoming first year student, when you choose to study here, uh, all first year students do get the scarf and it's a great way to identify yourself as a member of the community. So we're really excited at the possibility of having you here next year. Um, and please do let us know if there's anything we can do to support your decision. And I think we're moving on to a few questions now. Okay, so should we apply early as possible, even if we don't have an accurate projection of our future grade 12 grades? So absolutely, you should apply as early as possible. Our admissions team in the registrar's office will actually be looking at your grade 11 grades uh, to make that decision for early admission, because we understand that uh, when you're in uh, grade 12, you obviously won't know what you have a, a sense of what you'll get, but you won't know for sure. So they'll actually use your grade 12, your grade 11 grades to make those decisions. So absolutely, please apply as soon as possible. Okay. If you're um, interested, it, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Brianna. I believe you, you do need to have biology 30. It doesn't need to be taken in grade 12. And if you've taken it earlier, that's totally fine. But for the Bio Summer Institute, you will need biology 30. So it is meant for our students who haven't taken physics 30, which is a requirement to get into engineering, but have taken biology 30. So if you've done that, you can go into the Bioengineering Summer Institute and basically they'll catch you up on all the physics that you're required to enter first year engineering without needing to do any upgrading outside of the university. Thanks. So roughly how many students? So typically our first year class is around 850 students. And then I'll go right to the next one. So for local Alberta students, when is the preferred due date? So again, you have until March 1st, but applications are open. So please do apply as soon as possible. But um, the because the sooner you apply, we end up we do send out first waves of offers, um, you know, before the new year. So um, the earlier you'll apply, the earlier um, you'll get a response from us and be able to make your decision. Um, but again, March 1st is the, the actual um, cutoff. And to add just to Emily's sentence there, um, we encourage you basically to apply as early as possible. There's not really a downside to it. So we do do rolling admissions in engineering. So even if with your current grades, we can't admit you the first time we look at your application, we're never gonna throw that application out. We're gonna continue to look at it right to the very end. We're gonna continue to look at your updated transcripts and grades and keep seeing if we can admit you. So there's really not a downside to applying as early as possible. Great. Is it true that only five to 10% of people who apply in early applications get accepted? Uh, I don't know the percentage, but it's definitely a lot higher than five to 10%. So I'll go to the next two questions because it's um, what's the GPA? So we don't really have a, a set GPA each, each year. It does depend on the application numbers and how competitive they are. I will say if you have for the five courses that are required to, um, to get in, if you're in the mid eighties to high um, to nineties, that would put you in the competitive range. But again, um, it really is, we don't have a set number every year until we know our capacity, uh, how many applications we get, and obviously the average admissions of, uh, the average admission, high school admissions average for the students. If I want to, to apply for early admission, what marks will I use to apply and how does my admission average work in connection with my marks in grade 12? So, um, so yeah, you will be, um, as I said before, you'll, they'll be able to look at your grade 11 grades and make that decision and that offer. And then you'll just need to maintain those um, for, for grade 12 and obviously graduate from high school and complete all your 
courses, but we are able to make offers without all of your grade 12 um, grades. Um, the what entry, is, sorry. sorry, go ahead. Yeah, you want to take the entry 200 class? Yeah, yeah, sure. So that's one of your first year Common Core classes. So this is one that everyone gets to take. And that one's really an introduction to problem solving and design. So throughout that course, you're going to be um, working in collaboration um, to actually build and design a problem to a solution or a solution to one of the problems. So that's your very first um, introduction to coming up with a start to finish um, and solution. So what portion of current uh, engineering classes are in person versus remote? Um, so that's a great question. We're obviously in significantly different times right now. So basically, if you are, if you, if you're in first year and you choose to do everything 100% remote, if you want to stay, um, you know, in Ontario or wherever in um, in the world you may be um, coming from to study here, you can do your entire first semester uh, online and there's opportunities to make sure that you're um, doing your labs and watching the videos and try to, trying to make it as hands-on as possible. If you are in Calgary and you want to take some of your uh, components in person, there's also the opportunity to do that. Uh, campus is open for a small percentage um, of students. And so, again, you have the option to be uh, all online, but then um, if you are local to Calgary, there's the possibility that you can still um, come to campus and, um, and learn in person in just very small and social distance uh, groups. But for example, we uh, were able to open our makerspace and our student team spaces. Obviously, uh, it looks a little bit different in smaller groups, but um, they've been able to follow um, uh, follow good uh, sanitation protocols and social distancing. So we're still able to offer some of those key student experience things. 